Hey, Mitch. Oh, hey, Ed. What's going on today? I'm so excited to talk about our topic of comics. In fact, I went out and bought a huge collection. I spent so much money. It's fantastic. I've got um, OMAC, which is really cool. You know, these are awesome. OMAC. I've got so much OMAC. I've got more OMAC than you could possibly want. Um, Devil Dinosaur. I'm sure that's a classic, you know. Um, Johnny Thunder, number one, which is pretty cool. Um, I've got... Um, the Freedom Fighters. Oh my lord! Stop, you know that's got to be stop. worth so much money, stop, isn't it? Stop, you know, stop. like the Ed, Freedom Ed, Fighters. Come on! Ed, no, no, no. I, I I appreciate your enthusiasm for the hobby, but what you have there is complete junk. None of those books are worth the paper they're printed on, buddy. What? Let, yeah, you, give me a couple minutes, and I'll show you. Well, Wait. okay. Well, I'll get rid of them. How about that? Yeah, you might as well burn them, Ed. Oh, Let's ouch! Ah, yep, it's on fire. No, not the, what? Uh, not that one, Ed. Uh, not that one. Let's just start the show. Hi, this is Ed Dollister. This is Mitch Halleck. And welcome to another exciting episode of Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure. If it is your first time here, thanks so much for joining us. If you are a regular viewer, thanks for coming back. Uh, before we start, even before we do our usual thing, I've got to have a big shout out to Dax Game and VNR Boxy, who have got their starting off their own YouTube channel. So thanks for watching. If you are like them coming back to watch, Mitch, how can you find out a little bit more about our show? Oh, Ed, it's as easy as getting a valuable piece of pulp paper and putting it in plastic and slabbing it and putting it on a shelf and never opening it and hoping that one day you too can retire from that comic book. All you have to do is smash, like the Hulk, the button below, and you too will be subscribed to Mitch and Ed's excellent adventure and come along with us when we try to teach you about TV, movies, more, and toys. I forgot what I was going to say, <laughs> but that's okay. TV movies and more plus toys and today we're gonna do a whole new route aren't we ed yeah well i thought we'd have a look at um comics i've started getting into comic collection at our vintage store we sell quite a few um vintage comics but to be honest apart from the star wars comics and the indiana jones comics i don't really know too much about comics so i thought let's talk to an expert who knows everything there is about comics unfortunately mr ordway is not available so we've got you mitch <laughs> see what i did yeah. there um so yeah so i thought maybe what's some some beginners tips for collecting comics because i sort of just collect the comics that i like the covers of or that have some sort of connection but i'm sure there's that's not a bad way to go but um what are some tips about collecting comics one thing i know that condition is important is that correct you are correct. Ten cent mystery breath. That's it was Johnny Carson. You don't know who that is. But anyway. I do know. Of course I know okay, Johnny. I don't know That's if he his... ever got down there. Ed McMahon would say that. Here's the deal. Comic books are a great way to spend some time, Ed. It's a good thing you brought up this topic because I am a purveyor and collector and all the other weird sounding titles when it comes to comic books. Because I just happen to run Terrificon, Connecticut's Terrific Comic Con, happening every summer at the Mohegan Sun Expo Center right here in Connecticut. Did you know, Ed, that the first comic book was made right here in Connecticut, right down the street? And that's actually true. I'm not making that up. It started at Eastern Color Press in Waterbury, Connecticut, 1934. What they would do, Ed, really quick is... You heard of the Sunday Funnies. They did yep. have newspapers down in Australia, and they'd have funny comics. Well, yep. somebody thought, wouldn't it be clever, instead of getting those pages once a week or on Sunday, they gathered up all those comic strips, put them together in a big-sized tabloid, about 11 inches by 17, and they stapled them, mm -hmm. and they served those up with a cover, and it said, Funnies on Parade, because it was the Sunday Funnies, Sunday Funnies, just in a collection. Mm -hmm. And that was really the first comic book a book full of comic strips. And that went on for a bit. Very popular. It was a promotional item. Like if you went and bought soap powder, you would get this book that had all these comic strips. And then they realized that the kids enjoyed it. So they started doing more and more of it. And then eventually 
someone said, let's put original content in there. Stop the presses, literally stop the presses. And that is where the modern comic that you and I and all the rest of the world know and love really starts. And that's when you're going to find Superman, Batman, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, The Flash, Aquaman. All those are going to be coming from a company called National Periodicals, nowadays known as DC Comics. And then on the other side of the street, there was Captain America, the Human Torch, the Submariner. They were made by a company called Timely, which we now know as Marvel Comics. Mm -hmm. So that's the early start. And those are really the big two that survived and people know nowadays, Marvel and DC. In fact, you can even watch one of our older shows where Ed and I do the battle of the Marvel versus DC TV shows and movies from the 70s right here on YouTube. Yeah, links up there. But and I should say, as we're forward. Australians, uh, uh, you know, no stranger to comics because we've had for uh, many, many, many years the Phantom comics. Yes, Lee Fox, the Phantom. Yes, that's right. So, and I do here. know with sorry, not as popular here as it is down there, though. No, and uh, I do know with uh, Phantom comics because there are a dime a dozen here, um, yeah. the later ones, but I think. To, if you really want to get into collecting fandom comics, you have to collect the ones from, I think, from number, obviously, number one to 200. Yeah. They're the most valuable of those because they did so many, you know, they're into the thousands and they're still producing fandom comics now. There's thousands of them. So, well, it, uh, collecting comics is it really, there's some things you have to get into when you get into this hobby. Like you said, you like books by certain covers and things. You have to really set your parameters, your budget, because you, when I was a kid, you think I'm going to get every comic book ever made, ever made. But as you grow older and they keep making more of them and there's more companies, you begin to realize that's probably not going to happen, though. I do know some people who have practically every single comic book ever printed. It's insane. But the reality of the situation is it's a storage situation. Where are you going to put those books? Because they tend to be paper. They tend to get moldy. They tend to get old. There's bugs that eat at these things. They were never intended to last and be preserved for a long time. They were made on cheap paper, wood pulp. It was like the, the you know, what was left over when they cut things up to make lumber and they ground it up and they made paper out of it. But there wasn't archival paper. It wasn't acid free. It wasn't going to be protector from UV rays. So that's why a lot of those old books have that yellowish tint. And then yes. I know what happens to me. You open the books up and you get that, that moldy smell immediately. And then musky smell, you you start sneezing. It's, it's gross, but true. You get comic book fever there. But a lot of the books that you mentioned there, the Phantom, the really old ones, those are probably in what we call the golden age. Mm -hmm. And that's like books from the late 30s, the 40s, in the 50s, you know, when the war was going on. A lot of those books are hard to find for two reasons. One, in here during the war, they had what was called paper drives, where they would go around and collect paper and destroy it. And I don't know what they did with it, but they just... Turned it into bullets. Yeah. Turned them into bullets. That's right. Then we had what was known as the 10 cent nightmare over here. There was a guy named Dr. Frederick Wertheimer who was like, the. do you know who Dr. Phil is? Yes. Down there. Okay. He's basically like a pop culture psychiatrist. You know, he's one of these guys looking to make a name for himself. So he was trying to attribute all the world's ills with juvenile delinquency you know, murder, drugs, all that stuff. There was no video games to point the finger at. So what he did was put the finger on comic books. And I got to admit, some of the comic books that came out at the time were not the wholesome books that you might read nowadays. They were pretty horrific. They well, didn't were... they have a comic code come out at some point? No, that's, that, that is a result of what happened oh, here. Okay, so yep. he took these books and, I mean, they're, they're, there's decapitations on there. There's murder. There's husbands cutting their wives up and burying her in the backyard. And then she comes back from the dead. If you see the movie Creep Show, yes, the Stephen King movie that came out years ago, John Carpenter, all that, that's a homage to those horror stories. And that TV show that was on for years with the Crypt Keeper, yep, that was all part of that. That 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 comes from those horror books from the late 40s, early 50s. They didn't last that long. They were done by a company called EC, who eventually is going to become Mad Magazine. But they were very popular. They were very graphic. And it, it, it was just insane. It's like music. It's like there's a certain time of music, like rap music's big this week. And then, you know, pop bubblegum music's this week. And it was just the flavor of the month. Mm -hmm. So all the parents turned 
on the comic book company. So now you have literally bonfires. They're burning books. Mm -hmm. They're having collections because we're going to stamp out comic books. It put out most of all the companies went out of business. The folks that did the work, the artists, the writers, they couldn't get work anywhere. They were blacklisted. A lot of guys lost their houses, their jobs, their income. So a lot of books were wiped out there. So now we got scarcity. So if you're looking to get any books before the whole comics code, it's hard to find those books in any good condition because like I said, they were never intended to be collected. They were thrown away. They were burned. So if you can find a book in the forties, old Superman, old Captain America's old phantoms, it's a rarity. And if they're in really good condition, it's amazing. In fact, this, this weekend, the first appearance of Superman just sold for $6 million. That's not the first appearance of Superman, by the way, Ah, that's Superman one. He appears in Action Comics 1, and that's the famous cover oh, where he's him. in the car. Yeah, yes. there's a guy in the corner going like this. But that's Action Comics 1. That's the first appearance of Superman by Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster. Mm -hmm. Again, we could turn this into a Superman story. But that, you're never going to find a book in that good condition because no. they've got stories of people finding those like in walls. People were using for insulation. You know, it's in the bottom of a chest underneath a bed somewhere. No one ever did it. But that's another reason why. Scarcity, condition, and, you know, age, really. I mean, that book's already 1937, 38. What are we talking here? 80, 85 years already? 86 mm -hmm. years? So, so after, that? So after that was the uh, Silver Age? The Silver Age comes about late 50s. Oh, by the way, the comics code, which you mentioned earlier. Yep. So what they did is, you know what the good housekeeping seal of approval is? Is that a thing down there? Uh, no, but I've heard of good housekeeping it's, magazine. Yeah, good a seal yep. of approval. Basically, to survive being put out of business, the existing companies that managed to make it through the, the great purge of the Dr. Wertheimer's uh, assault crusade against comic books, they said, look, we're going to come up with a comics code. And we're going to have a list of things they can write about or draw. So no more vampires, no more zombies, no more beheadings, no more uh, evil dead, no more murder. It's got to be wholesome stuff. And at that point, you start to see Western comics. You start to see romance comics. So everything shifted from the superheroes that were in the 40s, then the horror stuff. Now it's going into more science fiction more fantasy, more, you know, cowboys were big on TV. That became the next big thing. So that's what rides out in the 50s. Now, the Silver Age begins over at DC Comics when the guys were sitting around like, hey, we're running out of ideas. You guys got any ideas for new books? Well, they said, remember those superheroes that we used to have in the 40s? They were really popular with the kids. Yeah, but that was 15 years ago. No one's going to remember that. Well, what if we reinvent them? So they took the old characters, the powers that they had, and just put a new spin on it. And since the space age was the new thing, they took all the heroes and they kind of made them futuristic. Mm -hmm. So you get the Flash, Barry Allen. Now he's a police scientist and he gets zapped by chemicals and a lightning bolt and he becomes the fastest man alive. That's a remake of the old Flash. Then they get the Green Lantern, who now he's a test pilot named Hal Jordan. And he gets a crashed alien spaceship. And the, the alien gives him a ring and he now becomes the powers of the Green Lantern Corps and all that. So what they were doing is they were just taking all the existing heroes they had. And now they just brought him back into the modern age of the late 50s, early 60s. That's the beginning of the Silver Age. Mm -hmm. Now, those books you could find because here's another little key secret. We're looking at the price on the cover. Mm -hmm. The old books had a 10 cent. And I don't know what it is down in Australia, but in the U.S. it was 10 cents or 10 pennies. Now they're going to go up to 12 cents. Ah. So you're going to start to see that. So if you look at a cover and you see the price on it, you can start to tell what year it is. Well, just I've, by got, uh, I've got I've uh, got this one here, which you can see is That's like a 15 1969. Cent. Yeah. 60, um, which is 15, 15 yep. cents. Yep. Um, and uh, the condition is not, I mean, it's, it's a little rough, but that's the oldest comic that I have. Oh, um, yeah. And I've got to say, I've got to say, um, if you're collecting high-end comics, these uh, these cases are really good. They're a lot better than the uh, 
you know, obviously oh, the plastic the, the, bags, the plastic ones, but um, and you can take them out, but um, yeah, yeah. So that's um, so that's at the tail end of the um, the Silver Age, yeah, yeah. isn't it? So, well, uh, no, actually, yeah. Then it goes to silver, it goes into bronze, bronze, so bronze is, in the 70s, is where so. I, yeah. So I, that's where I usually collect my comics because yeah. that's where I was brought up. So that's nineteen seventy to nineteen eighty. Five, what, at the beginning of the Bronze Age basically starts with the death of Gwen Stacy, Spider-Man's girlfriend. She's oh. green, killed by the Green Goblin. And that's really when a character, a supporting character, a main supporting character, was killed off in the books. That never had really happened before. And when that happened, it's the comics became more adult. So what it was is the kids that were reading the books in the 60s, now they were all going off to college. They were starting their you know, young 20s. So the books actually aged along with them. They weren't more of that, you know, goofy Captain Marvel, Billy Batson and the talking mm -hmm. tiger and all that. They were starting to be more realistic. Spider-Man's friend, Harry Osborn, was addicted to drugs. Uh, Gwen Stacy gets murdered by the Green Goblin. The Green Goblin gets killed. So now you're getting more adult collectors. The Punisher shows up. Oh, yes. Who's this vigilante with a skull on his chest with a gun that goes to avenge his family being murdered. So comics are starting to get more like the movies that were at the time. There was Death Wish was out there, French Connection. Mm -hmm. They start to get more mature. And that is the beginning of what we call the Bronze Age. And that's going to last up until mid-80s. And then there's a whole other thing that happens. So if you're going to get into comics tomorrow and you have, say, a couple hundred dollars, the first thing I would tell you to do is buy what you like. What superhero do you like? Do you like DC? Do you like Superman, Batman, the Flash, Green Lantern? Or do you like Marvel? Do you like Captain America, Iron Man, the Hulk, Fantastic Four? And even there, there's subdivisions. Because it's like, you could just be a Spider-Man fan. And there's enough Spider-Man books out there to last you a million years. There's the amazing Spider-Man, Marvel team-up. There's the spectacular Spider-Man. He's got Peter various Parker. There's all Peter Parker, stories. the spectacular Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's happened over the years, too. Just like Batman. Over in D.C., there's the Dark Knight. There's Detective Comics. There's Batman. There's the, you know, the untold files of the Batman. There's the Joker. There's the Catwoman. There's Harley Quinn. There's so many spinoffs of that Batman family that you could spend a fortune just trying to collect all that stuff. So you really have to set your aspirations and what you're going to do. You're not going to get every Batman book unless you're a millionaire because the first Detective Comics 27 is going to cost you a fortune if you could find it. So maybe you say, I'm just going to get Batman from the 80s when he becomes this vigilante character. And that happens in a book called Frank Miller's The Dark Knight, which once again, the comic books matured another level. Now, instead of just one character getting killed, now you got Batman. He's almost like a Clint Eastwood character. He's older. He's grizzled. He, the, the, the Joker's murdering people like a, a, a serial killer out there. So the whole tone of comics changes in the 80s now. Now we get Reagan's in office. There's nuclear war. We get the Watchmen series by Alan Moore, which is a whole dystopian nightmare of the future. And it's, it's not the same comic books you might have read in the 70s or God knows in the 60s. So things so change. So much for that uh, comic code. No, no. And that was being phased out, too, because you had all these writers that grew up under the comics code and they wanted to tell these stories, but they couldn't tell them with the rated G restrictions mm -hmm. that were out there. So they slowly started going around the comics code and it made it basically defunct because nobody if you wanted to read books that were that wholesome, you'd go read kitty books like Richie Rich or Casper, the oh, friendly the, the, the Walt Disney, um, the Donald Arch Duck comics. Yeah. Yes. Donald Duck or Archie. Archie's a family favorite. He's never been, you know, he's always vanilla. He's wholesome. Jughead, Archie, Betty, Veronica, Moose. They're all at the salt shop or pop so uh, soda shop drinking. You know what I mean? It's like that little Americana, like watching happy days forever. It never yep. goes anywhere. So there's all types of books and stuff like that. But now, artwork becomes the big thing but years ago it used to be story now we're shifting to art and image and i say image because a lot of the hotshot artists that worked at marvel left to start their own company called image comics that's where you get todd mcfarland rob liefeld jim lee eric larson and they all had their own creator owned books no longer were they making stories and artwork based on somebody else's property 
You couldn't do. I mean, if you came up with a good idea for Spider Man, guess what? Marvel Comics owns it. You came up with a great villain for Superman, guess what? DC Comics owns it. So you really had no ownership. If they went and made toys or a movie or a TV show, and you wrote and drew that character, you really didn't get anything else but a nice paycheck every week. That's it. But if you owned your own creations and they did make a movie, a TV show, a video game, a toy, you could be sitting on a lot of money very fast. And that's what happened in the 90s. A lot of these creators said, I'm going to do my own book, my own character. And that started a whole new collecting craze too. We had something called the variant covers. Mm -hmm. When I was collecting in the 90s, you would get a book that had a gold foil, a blue foil, a red foil, 3D comics, bags that had stickers or tattoos were bound inside of them, you know? Mm -hmm. it was It was wide open. Everybody was doing a gimmick. But just like everything else, when it goes up, it comes down. There was the great implosion. There was too many books being made. There was too many collectors, too many speculators that were buying hundreds of copies of books that were going to keep them in their garage. It was a whole supply and demand. You know, they print 10 million books. Well, guess what? That's a lot of books out there and they're not all going to be worth anything. So what happened is shops started to close. People started realizing they were buying basically junk. You know, they were buying thousands of copies of books that were worthless because everybody else had the same thousands of copies at their house. Nobody wanted it. It wasn't scarce or rare or anything. So that almost killed the comic industry in the mid nineties. Marvel goes into chapter 11 bankruptcy, DC struggles. A lot of titles are canceled. Then we come into the two thousands and you know, what saves everything there. And this is where folks like you that are new to the, the hobby get into it. They become major motion pictures. Mm -hmm. We have Spider-Man, we have X-Men. Then next, you know, we have the Iron Man Marvel cinematic universe starts up. Batman comes back with the dark Knight series. And then Superman, man of steel, Zack Snyder comes into play. So now we got a whole new fan base of people that just know the characters from watching the Arrow TV show or Supergirl yep. or the Flash on TV or going to the movies. So that's where we are now. So in the last 85 years, we've gone from newspaper strips to cartoon shows on Saturday morning to major billion dollar franchises. And all along that, people have been collecting comic books. And there's so many out there. I say to you, buy what you like. Because you're going to go broke if you try to get every single book that's out there because there's too many companies out there now. There's too many books out there now. And the price of the average comic is not 10 cents anymore. Mm. It's probably like five bucks a book. So that's a lot of money nowadays. If you want to get 10 copies of a book, that's 50 bucks a week. It starts adding up, you know? So, so maybe it is good to go to my your local, local comic shop and look at those back issues where you can get you know, them for 50 cents, a dollar, $2 yeah. and you can revisit some of those older. What do you, what would you suggest to someone who's uh, what's if they just don't really care, they just want to, they like the idea of comics. What would be uh, like a hot well, comic book line to collect? So we, we were talking you, about ROM a little bit earlier off, off my, no, no, I was camera, just thinking you know, about that too. So if I was just say, I watched the daredevil TV show. Mm-hmm. I'm just a fan of Daredevil. I watched the TV show. I saw Charlie Cox. I heard he's coming to Terrific Con on August 18th, I heard 2024. That too. I heard that too, and he is. So I want to get into Daredevil. What you could do is you can go to the local comic book store or even a bookstore, even Amazon.com, and you can buy a small book like this, which is only $10 US, but it has 10 or nine of the first nine or 10 issues of the Daredevil. And they're all reprinted in here. And that's a good way to start. It's a good reference point. Now, then there's not a lot of value in this because it's just a reprint. But mm -hmm. if you're a fan of the books and you just want to read about the character, you can go and get this nice little paperback. And there you go. So that's about 10 books. Now, if you want to spend more Ooh. money. Oh, more. we get it. We get hold on. We're getting behind the scenes, Mitch. Sorry about that. That's where all the dancing girls are. Quick, move them away. No, we'll cut over. I grabbed my wrong book there. Oh. Now, if you want to get even more, Ed, and you say, hey, I've got like $100 to spend. Yeah. You can get this, which is called an omnibus. Now, instead of just having nine issues, it's got 41 comics in here and the first annual, and it weighs about six or seven pounds. But boy, oh boy, it's just Packed. loaded with 
And it, you know what the cool thing about this is? It has the original letters pages from the 60s. Yep. So you could read what people are saying. You read Stan Lee and Jack Kirby and all the guys who were at Marvel. They would answer the letters. So you yes. could read the responses. And what's even fun is you'll notice sometimes you'll see names like George R. R. Martin on the fan pages. And that's yep. the guy who's going to grow up to write Game of Thrones. Or you'll see some actors or some other authors in there. Yep. And you'll wait a minute. Is that the same guy that's doing such and such? Is that Mitch and Halleck riding in? Yep. It is. Yeah. So there you go. That was That's called an omnibus. Again, it's just a reprint. So, so far I've shown you two reprints. That's the way if you really want to get into the character. Now, if you want to spend some money and you go, I want to own Daredevil number one. Well, then you can actually go and get something that's been what we call slabbed. Now, this is done by a grading company. There's several of them out there. There's CBCS, there's CGC, and those are the top ones right there. So what they do is, you'll see this number over here. Yep. This is a 6.0. It's based on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being perfect. 10 is what's called a gem mint. You're never going to really find a, a perfect book because that's got to come right off the press. No smudges, no fingerprints, no creases. I mean, it's like, I, I, I couldn't tell you. It's like, don't even breathe on it. You will find a lot of 9.8s out there from newer books, 9.9s. The higher the number up here, the more the value of the book. Mm -hmm. And what you could do is you can actually go and there's like a survey. You can see how many of these books that are out there in that condition. Because if it's CGC, they keep a record of it. They'll say, oh, there's only, you know, 200 known copies of Daredevil number one in a 9.8. So that mm -hmm. means in the whole wide world, there's only that many books in that good a condition or something like that. And again, now we're starting to get value. So if there's a lot of these out there, maybe this is worth a couple thousand dollars. If there's none out there, then this is worth tens of thousands of dollars. So the reason why this is like this is it's sealed. It's waterproof. It's got a UV protector on it. Don't put it in the sun, though. So some people do that. The sun tends to be a little bit more powerful than people imagine. They mm -hmm. go, oh, no, it's protected and flat. Nothing is that good. I mean, I've seen beautiful books worth a lot of money, but some collector left it out in his living room. And the direct sunlight comes in, and after two years, yeah. you'll see the colors are all faded from it. Even though it's still, yeah, in a, you know, condition inside, you've now just lost the color on the cover of it, and it's a shame because I've seen books that are like a nine point eight that have been left outside, and the sun aged them, and now they're like half of the value because the color's been wiped away. But you can get different types of labels. The like a blue one means it's a good book. If it's purple, that means there's had some restoration done to it. If it's green, it means another type of thing. If it's yellow, it's been autographed by Stan Lee or one of the artists or the writers. So these labels have different meanings depending on the color of it. But this this is if you're going to go higher grade. And this can I ask really what would be the um different? Like obviously there's a your that's a six that looks in pretty good nick to me just looking at it yeah on on the yeah. screen. What's the price yeah. difference roughly between that and a um a loose copy of Daredevil number one? Well, a loose copy of Daredevil number one, if it's loose, you got to start to look at things like the spine, yeah, and where the staples go, and those are usually the first signs of wear because when you go to open the book. They tend to tear a little bit. So you'll start oh, yeah. to see. I can see that on my. Um, yeah. And then we have man. something. There's cracks that are forming it because of the way the printing was done back then. It's not the paper itself. It's almost like a clay type of paper that they used back then. So when they would print the ink on it, it laid on top of the paper. So you'll get cracks and you'll get chipping. They call that. You'll see along some of the older books, there's like little flakes of the cover missing from the book. So all yeah. those things tend to happen when a book's raw. Yeah, when it's not sealed and stuff, because you're handling it. If you fold it, you crease it. If this was folded, it'd have like a white line down the yes. middle because the ink would literally crack off of it. All those little tears and rips and smudges, like water stains, or if it's out too long, it goes up here. You'll see it says off white to white pages because older books tend to get a creamy color just from the oxidation of the air and the, and the paper and stuff. They turn yellow or off white. If it's kept out of the sun and it's kept away from moisture, it might still have that bright whiteness from the original book. But all those are going to affect the condition of the book. 
And, you know, if it's got pages missing, if there's something cut out of it, because that's happened, like kids have mailed away the coupon for the x-ray glasses inside. You really have to look through the books before you buy them to make sure they're, you know, what you want. And the other thing is too, how much you really want the book. I've got some Spider-Mans that are 1.8. I mean, they're barely hanging on there, (laughs) but I have the book. And if you're a collector, I have every single Spider-Man from issue one to now, which is like over a thousand issues, but I'm just OCD. I just wanted to get every single Spider-Man. So I have some that are mint condition. I have some that are in fair condition. The other ones we call reader copies because they're just banged up and barely hanging on. But I have it, you know, it's a completist mentality. It's like, I want to have them all. So I did it. So these type of books you could find, I'd say, I don't like to say go on eBay because there's usually a discrepancy. What you can do if you do go buy a book on eBay, say you want to get this book, go under the listings and you probably know this already, go under the sold listings and that'll give you a barometer of what the book is going for currently there's a difference between if i came out today and said i want six thousand dollars for this book and then you go to look and say well there's six other books that sold that are the same 6.0 but they only sold for three thousand dollars that's more realistic yes that's the supply and demand it's like well i can say what i want but i can't find anybody to buy it most people are buying it for three thousand dollars so when you go to bid on things don't fall in love with it be be a little bit cautious you know, it's your money. Don't rush into things. You might find a bargain somewhere. I've seen this book just pop up a couple of weeks ago, raw, without the seal on it. Somebody wanted $3,000 for it. Now, I didn't have it in my hand, but if you're a Daredevil collector and you want issue one, $3,000 is not bad mm-hmm. for the first appearance of Daredevil. So that's that's a book there. And here's the other thing that's happened in the last couple of years. Movie speculation, TV speculation. When they announce a new movie, everybody goes crazy the prices go through the roof Mm -hmm. eternals is the greatest example that was a jack kirby comic book that was created in the 70s never really sold you could buy that book in a dollar bin you'd go and find the entire run it was like 19 issues wasn't a big deal as soon as disney announced they were making the eternals movie the price went through the roof people were taking issue one they were asking 800 dollars for it Then Mm -hmm. the movie came out and it wasn't a fan favorite and no one liked it. The book plummeted overnight. It went from $800. I can probably get the entire run of the Eternals right now for about 150 bucks. Yep. That's how much it just wiped out. So be careful. Don't fall in love with the book just because you watched the TV show or you saw that it's going to be a big movie and think this is going to be the money you retire with. It never, ever really works out that way. It's very, I think the whole, that's with always with collecting. You don't buy to um, think about what it's going to be worth no. or whatever you buy because you, you love it. And, and if you like the Eternals, you know, great. Yeah, buy I it. mean, if you're a big fan of Jack Kirby, that was the guy who wrote and drew it. And that's his baby. Well, he's a... Uh... He's uh he's a devil dinosaur. He's Omac. Yes. He's yeah. Omac. He's uh where's the where's Devil Devil Dinosaurs in there? Yeah. Oh, there's my Freedom Fighters. Hang on, there's that, Devil Dinosaur. Yeah. The weirdest, these are the weirdest comics. Well, Jack Kirby, he's got a fan base, and you know, it's it, there's there's battle lines driven down the middle of the road there. Who likes who? You have to acknowledge for all the contributions. He started off in the 40s co-created captain you know captain america was joe simon and jack kirby that's their character and there's so many books marvel fantastic four the hulk thor i mean there were so many books he worked on he created the designs the looks or everything people tell you he wrote all the stories and stanley really didn't write the story so there's a whole debate about who is the real creator of it so he has a, a unique position in the world of comics jack kirby's got a magic touch but not everything he did was gold. Yep. And Dark Side was one of his creations. That was from the New Gods book. That was the big bad guy that was going to be in the Justice League movie. Didn't really come out as much as they thought. Yeah. It is what it is. But a cool but, action figure from Kenna. A cool action have. figure, such like that. But I don't know. You like I said, just buy what you like. Yeah. Don't. And don't is go there? Pretty- is it? Is there maybe one uh, overrated comic that you think that is not, you know... Overrated? Yeah. Well, The Walking Dead... Now, here's here's the thing about The Walking Dead. That started as a small run. It was black and white. Robert Kirkman did it. A fellow named Tony Moore illustrated it. 
they didn't do a lot of the books. I think it was only like 10,000. And then there was a problem with the press. So some of those books were not perfect. I think they even less than that. Then the show comes. Huge hit. That book skyrocketed. That was going for a couple thousand dollars at one point. And it's not that old. I mean, it's you know barely 20 years old. But mm -hmm. It was insane. And then the show starts going downhill after 12 seasons. People don't like it as much. And a lot of the book value went down. It's still a pricey book for what it is. But I think that was the most hyped book mm -hmm. I've ever seen in my lifetime. That one up there. The first appearance of Wolverine is another one that's gone all over the place since I've I bought that on the newsstands for, you know, 20, 30 cents when it came out, mm -hmm. read it, tossed it away, didn't think anything about it. Then the new X-Men come out, then Wolverine becomes the star. He's on every book in the 80s and the 90s. Hugh Jackman makes him, a, what, eight, nine different movie appearances, mm -hmm. and he's coming back again this summer. So the first appearance of Wolverine is a book that's always up there. But then there's a big debate. He actually appears on the last page of Hulk issue 180. The full story with Wolverine in it is Hulk 181. So for years, there's been this controversy like, well, what's his first appearance? Is it where he shows up in the last page of the 180? Which I would, I would say, say, yeah, because that's where he was. Go, oh, no, 181 is his first appearance because that's where he's in the whole story. I'm like, well, uh. you just said appearance. He appears in 180. He's in the story in 181. But for some reason, people always point to Hulk 181 as the... Uh, the first appearance full well, fledged first appearance. appearances are always i know um i've got um I, somehow i've got two from two of the empire strikes back comics which yes, is boba, boba fett's Fett. yeah first yeah. appearance and my copies are rough i but know but that only really started when the mandalorian became a big yep. hit the big Mandalorian tv show suddenly they're like that's the first appearance of boba fett i'm like well it's a movie adaptation hmm. and movie adaptations really weren't they weren't really valuable books years ago. It's like, eh, because it's not an original story. It's just, uh, you know, a, 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 an adaptation, a version of the movie. Nobody really cared. They were done mass produced because, you know, they were trying to get people that normally didn't get comics, like Condor yeah. Man had a book. The Black Hole had a book. They were just done just yeah. for little kids. And Star Wars was really the only one that became a big hit yes. because the movie became a big hit. But the first three issues of Star Wars were actually on the newsstands months before the movie came out so the movie comes out in may i already had star wars issue three i didn't really even read it because i was looking through and going what in the hell is this because it didn't look the same on the printed page yes. as it did on the screen not a big deal star wars number one was not a big deal the really reason the real reason why that's a valuable book is they did a price change in comics at that time so you're going to see some star wars number one that have a 30 cents price and the other ones have a 35 cent price on it. So if you could find the 30 centers, those are worth more because they did a second printing where they changed the price. So that I'm gonna, early... I'm, I've got my white cardboard comic book box. I'm going to have a look at that after. No, this. Sir, that, that, and that's, that. and that's the thing too. You really have to know what you're looking for. Yeah. Cause they reprint too. things as well too. You know, they even... re Oh, star Wars one has been reprinted so many times. It's not funny. And it used to be very easy to tell star Wars because in the upper corner where Luke Skywalker was, they put the words reprint yes. right alongside it. So you could tell right there, this is not the original printing, but along the way over the years, books didn't have that on the cover. They did a book called the killing joke about the Joker yes. in the eighties. They, they must've printed that book 13 times. It was so popular. It just kept going back to press. You had to buy it, open it up, and then on the inside, in the lower footnotes there, it would say sixth printing, seventh printing, eighth mm. printing. Only the first printing that was really the valuable one because what happens lots of times is there might be changes to the story, like something happened. There was a book yep. that came out a couple of years ago by a fellow named Brian Azzarello. It was called Batman Damned. And in that book, the artist drew Batman's Ooh. true story. As Batman's changing out of his clothes, you can see the Batawang. And that got through everybody. So that book was flying off the shelves. People are like, I got to get Batman's Gotcha, penis. yep, okay. And then when they found out, they went back and they darkened the, the ink on it so you don't it see. It became the Dark problem. Knight. Yeah, they, they darkened the night there. And so that the, that book was a, a hot ticketed item because everybody wanted to get it because it was there. The well, Kiss book. We did a story about Kiss yes. recently. 
the first book, the Marvel Super Special, had piss blood in it. it the, the guys took vials of blood out. They mixed it in the inks and stuff. So if you're a Kiss fan and you want a book that has blood in it, you know, that, that made the value go up for a while, you know? Yeah. Well, the so. death of Superman, I've got a, I've got wow. that. That's got a, mine's like a third. It's got uh, the three on it, which is the third. Re, third yeah. Of it. And I bought the that at the that... newsstand or the, you know, news agent where we, we go. So. Yeah. But the thing is, so did 2 million other people. They made yeah. so many of those books and it was such a big media hit. Everybody mm. was on the news talking about the death of superman was he really gonna die it was a gimmick and i know the folks that work on it they'll tell you it was just, just a story they were never gonna kill him permanently yeah but the way the pr went out and the reaction from the general public people really thought that superman was really dead it was like how could you kill superman and everybody ran out you know grandparents you know grandma and mm -hmm. dads and kids like, superman's dead and suddenly the book went through the roof everybody wanted but the company's not foolish. If they know people want to read it, what do you think they did? They just kept printing more and more and more of it. So now, unfortunately, there's a glut of the death of Superman out there. There's there's just too many copies out there. You'd have to get rid of millions before that really goes up in value. So, sorry. Sorry about that. That's all right. But I remember people coming in and buying 20 copies of it, yeah. thinking that it's going to be... It's the book that they don't buy. It's the action figure that you don't buy. It's the Marion Ravenwood figure that no one buys because they want Indiana Jones. Mm -hmm. It's the little blue snaggletooth guy that's from Sears catalog that no one buys. It's always the stuff you don't look at mm -hmm. that you kick yourself. I'm going to tell you a prime example. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes. Comes out in the mid 80s. It was done by these two guys up in Massachusetts. Yeah. It's a black and white book. So it sells for like a dollar. All the other books at that point were like 60 cents at that point, 50 cents, 60 cents, 60. I remember those two guys, Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman, drove down in their car to the bookstore in New Haven where I lived, and they had them in the trunk of their car in boxes, the first three issues of it. And they were going from store to store trying to distribute and get people to buy their book. Just the, There's no internet. It's all word of mouth mm -hmm. back then. I come into the store. There they are. Hey, you want to read our book? Eh, you know, you're trying to be nice. You know, what? Because I'm only reading Marvel and DC comics. Yeah. I don't know what this New England comics is. It's a small press. I go pick it up. The first thing I do when I open it up is it's in black and white. And you're like, wait, you want me to pay twice as much on a normal book? And it's a black one. There's no color in it. It's all, where's that? It's like a newspaper. And it's printed on thin paper too. It's like a newsprint. Didn't buy it. I bought the third issue because that was the newest one they had. They both autographed it on the inside, which was a thing. People didn't sign books on the outside. They used to sign them on the inside because mm -hmm. it would ruin the cover. That's a whole thing that's changed. Issue one of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles now is about $10,000. And I could have had it for $1. I had it in my hand and I walked away. Issue two, thousands of dollars. Issue three is a couple of thousand. You know, it depends on the condition again. I rolled mine up, threw it in the locker at my college because I was like, I don't want this book. And I just threw it. And then I remember when I heard it got big, I ran to my locker and dug it out because it was literally in the back yep. of the, the thing. So you never know what's going to be a big item. You yep. know, like the Walking Dead book I told you, people probably figured it's just a zombie story like Night of the Living Dead. Nothing new under the sun. Not a big deal. And then yep. it becomes a big deal. So. so I guess the takeaway is, you know, buy what you what you love what interests you don't try and chase the next big thing, you know, necessarily, because um, I think you're probably in it for the wrong reasons. You know, you want to collect, uh, you know, like collecting is what you love and what uh, connects. Mm. Bless you. Excuse me. It's the mold for the old comic mold is getting me. Now your Have daredevil me. number one's covered in mucus. Oh no. I oh, know. That's a little extra. Goes... But... One thing, one thing with um having it though in the, sealed thing is obviously you don't get to um you can't read it you know when it i mean well, this one you can obviously open but those you can't can you you can oh all you gotta do well don't want to ruin it no nah. all you gotta do is get a thin blade oh yeah okay it and open it up but once you do that it may not be a 6.0 how do i know ed that you just didn't sneeze all over that daredevil book and it has all spit bubbles on it now. Now it's down to a 4.0. Yeah. So you can open these up 
if you really want to. I do know people. There's a fellow named Don Rosa. He writes uh, uh, Donald Duck Scrooge comics. He has videos. He buys old books from the 40s and the 30s and the 50s just to break them open and to free them so they could be read. And he, there's videos of him buying these books, cracking them open, laying on the floor and reading them like a little kid. He goes, this is what they were meant to be. Wow. So it is what it is. If you're obviously doing that, you don't really care about reselling them and things. So, But you but know what? You, I was going to say where you can yep. go to get books. Now, where you can go to get books, I said there's the internet. But the best place to go, and I'm not just plugging my show. There are any shows. You can go to what we call a little comic, sh a comic show, a comic convention. Be wary. A lot of these big events call themselves comic cons. They're really just autograph shows with celebrities and, and movie actors and such like that. A real comic convention is going to have dealers with these long boxes, these long white boxes where you can go through them and the conditions of the books. They might be 50 cent comics. They might be dollar comics. That might be books that cost thousands of dollars and such. Those are real places to go. And they're open to haggling. You know, you'll see a book that's like twenty dollars. You say to the owner, "What if I give you fifteen? Oh, all right. Sometimes yes, sometimes yeah. no. It depends on the day. If you want to go for good bargains, here's another little tip: go on a Sunday. If it's a three day show, go on the last day Sunday. If it's a one day show, go towards the end of the day because you know why? Nobody wants to pack all that stuff back up and load it back right. into their truck or their van. They might be willing to get rid of some merchandise at a lower price just to get some money and just to save themselves some space and time and stuff. I've seen guys sell whole boxes of books for $50, $60. Might not be the greatest books ever made, but if you're just into it to get comics, You've you got can an get instant collection. Hundreds. Yeah, an instant collection. One of those long boxes has up to almost 300 comics in it, depending on how they are. The smaller boxes get about 100, 150 books, but it's a good way to get into the habit or the hobby. And uh, you might find gold in there because that's another story. Sometimes the books become valuable that are in those long boxes and the uh, the store owner might not even know what he has because they just announced uh, this is a dollar book. But mm -hmm. the Wonder Man TV show is coming out on Disney Plus. Well, suddenly it might spike. Now, that the owner's not going to go digging through every single box of books he has to go find Wonder Man number one. But you might find it for 50 cents. I've had that happen to me. I've gone and found a book that was like 50 cents and it turns out the book's worth two or $300, you know? So you never know what you're going to find yeah. out there. So go to a comic sh uh, show if it's near you. Check the flea markets. Check the uh, yard sales. There's always somebody throwing books away. Times a year, if guys are going off to college or young ladies are going off to college, that's a good time when mom and dad are cleaning out their rooms. Mm -hmm. They don't want some stuff uh sadly if people pass away it's a little morbid but they have estate sales here yeah. you go to an estate sale there might be a whole room i know when i'm finally off this earth my wife's going to have one heck of a sale down here so well she's going to be calling me hopefully but anyway be calling you but seriously <laughs> i have so much stuff here you know my boys don't want it my sons i might just say hey you know i'm selling it off someday uh where else can you go comic local convention. comic shops as well local comic shops yeah yeah a lot of those shops have sales too especially around the holidays they'll have like a buy two get one free get you know get stuff off the wall for half price some of the old and, uh, and i'll say that in new york is it forbidden planet is that the there's forbidden planet and there's midtown comics midtown uh, so Com i think it was midtown comics have got um i think it was like on tuesdays it was one day they've got half yeah. price comics they do they do they have half which price is comics. great i bought a stack of bronze age you know, hulks and this and that, yeah. but you know, that's a good way to uh, get your collection. And the best thing I think I enjoy these bronze age comics for is the ads. You know, I know. You've got ads for NPC models. You got ads for star Wars toys. The, um, the Farrah Fawcett and Charlie's the Cheryl Ladd full door poster. Oh yeah. All those sort of things. Well, here's, here's what's even funny. This right here is from a company out in Colorado called mile high comics. And this is from a book that came out, what year is this book? 1980, 1986. That's yep. when the Wonder Man. Here's some of the book prices. Ready? Yeah. Okay. I want to buy a Spider-Man number one. Amazing Spider-Man number one. Let's see how much that goes for. Back issues, back issues. Oh, wait a second. I could buy Raiders Lost Ark for 50 cents. I can oh. buy 
The new mute. I could buy Peter Parker number one for three dollars. Savage Sword of Conan magazine. That's a book I've been trying to get for years because it's got the first man thing in it. Well, the man thing's a creature. Don't get gross. Yeah. It's selling for fifteen dollars at the time. Where the oh the X Men. Now X Men was a big book. X Men. Let me that Hulk book I just told you about. Yep. Hulk one eighty one. It's insane. It's only about thirty dollars. Now it goes for about three thousand yeah. dollars. A bad copy goes for three thousand dollars. It's just, I don't know, Ed. Hulk one eighty one yeah. twenty dollars. That's it. That's the first appearance of Wolverine right there. Quick, we uh, need to get back in our uh, phone booth and go back in time. I tell you, I would if I could. And I'm looking at some of these. One, I want to cry when I see these prices. <laughs> Fantastic Four. First appearance of the Silver Surfer. Eight dollars. That's another. Oh, Eternals is in here, by the way. Uh, Eternals number one is a dollar fifty. I think that's overpriced, but who knew? Who knew? Forty years ago. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that look at uh, comics and uh, maybe get you started with some tips and hints. You can also find out about some other comic-related movies and TV shows. How can you do that, Mitch, on our channel? Oh, Ed, as easy as going down in a basement and smelling all that moldy books and having your nose stuff up right on camera. All you have to do is smash the subscribe button, and you too can come along with me and Ed as we go back and dust off our brain cells and try to remember what things were like back in the 70s and the 80s as we talk about TV, movies, comic books, toys, and more right here on the mighty YouTube. And that's about it. It's really And we're we're almost at a thousand subscribers. And once we do, we're gonna Show celebrate them, by uh by I'm gonna crack open my still sealed Saturday night fever and I'm gonna taste the taste taste the rainbow. He's gonna get that. Sunday morning sickness after he eats the I Saturday know, I will. I it's will. a it's a nice hobby. Let me just tell you, I've enjoyed comics. It's a nice hobby. I've been doing it since I've been four years old, and I'm 57 now. So I've got a lot of a lot of hobbies here. But again, buy what you like, buy the character you like. Don't get into it thinking you're going to become a millionaire because it's really not going to really happen. And you know, just enjoy the hobby, enjoy the books, enjoy the characters. You know, that's all. Just like anything else, toys, whatever, movie posters, whatever yeah. you want to collect. Yeah. Just get it if you like it, but don't buy it. Just to flip it that's you know? right that's right that's it well thanks which we appreciate your uh, expertise on the subject this is ed dollister and this is mitch halleck sneezing and uh we'll see sorry i stood over your uh, little tagline what was going what were you going to say i said i was just sneezing that's all oh that's all right then and god bless call. you and we'll see you next time thanks for watching